to want. Something I've observed in my matchmaking business is that women who are smart, independent, and successful tend to struggle the most in their dating lives. And I believe this is because of hypergamy, which basically means that women tend to want to date up. They want someone who's superior to them financially and in status and in IQ. And so what happens is the more money a woman makes and the more independent she becomes, the more her dating pool shrinks because the pool of men that she is going to be attracted to is going to be smaller. But the problem is men date based on a different criteria. Men are not dating women based on their wealth. They're not dating women based on their IQ. They're dating them based on, is she going to be a good mother to my kids? Is she nurturing? Does she make me feel like a man? Is she attractive? And so you have this imbalance. And it becomes a bigger problem as women get older because then they start competing with women who are 5, 10, 15 plus years younger than them. And again, because men are not dating off the same values and criteria, it makes it harder for them to find a mate. And I think this stems from a few different things. One being feminism, you know, the road to hell was paved with good intention. I don't think feminism is a bad thing, but I do think it's unsurprising that the more independent women have become, the more childless and single they've stayed. And also the destruction of the family nucleus. As divorce rates started to rise, you had more moms telling their daughters, don't ever put yourself in a position where you have to depend on a man. And like, was the juice worth the squeeze? Let me know what you think in the comments and follow me for more. Okay, um, I'm not responding to this video. Uh, I only played that so you can decide how relevant it is to what I'm going to talk about, which is a couple of back and forth that I had in the comment section. Uh, and also, I really, when I first heard it, I um, automatically just wrote it off as her copying and pasting talking points that she's heard. So I, I wasn't going to respond, but then I went to the comment section I had a couple back and forths. The only reason that I even let that play. So do with that what you want. And let's get to the comments that I want to talk about. And I got to go back and find it. Give me, no, actually, here it is right here. So this lady um, says, I was raised to be a tra tra traditional wife and was one for a long time. So when my husband did something awful to me in our marriage, and I needed to leave, I had nothing. No work history, no money, nothing. Women would love to be able to depend on me. The problem is we don't really have that as an option. But I think she means women would love to depend on like their husband or something because it doesn't make sense that she says women depend on me, meaning her, when she doesn't marry women. So I think she meant uh, on men. Um, but let's, let's, I responded. Okay. Yeah. She did. She depend on men. Okay. Um, where am I? I asked, did you write out a prenup? Nobody's saying ladies. No. When we have these discussions, we're not saying literally get to the point where you are absolutely just this. You're literally negligent to your own well being. Like, that's stupid. But it also doesn't need to be you make sure that he's constantly on edge to where you'll leave him. You, you, you don't fix the problem by simply putting it on the other side. That's that's not how you fix the problem. If there's an imbalance on one end, you just literally push it all the way to the other end. There's still an imbalance. It's stupid to address it that way. So in this day and age, not only do you write a prenup, no matter the tax bracket, they're not just for rich people. But you also have the technology to where you don't have to get an allowance. You literally can have equal authority over the bank account. It's that I don't understand why we keep acting like that's not a, an option. And like I said before, when I suggested prenup before to a woman, she immediately blocked me because I apparently, when, I, when you suggest a prenup, you just want to trap women so they can't do anything. I... To people that do that, there's no there's no talking to them. So all, on and on and on we go and get nowhere. But let's keep moving. And she says, nope, sure didn't. I was 19. And I absolutely, absolutely think that prioritizing independence and financial self-reliance is being discouraged here. But thank you for your empathy. I think she's just being a smart ass because obviously um, there was no empathy there. And then she says, 
independence and financial self-reliance is being discouraged. Um, the independence was, well, first of all, I'm not discouraging anything. I'm literally just trying to pick people's brains and maybe, maybe we both come to some, um, understanding of the other side or maybe some form of like middle ground, maybe slim chance, but possible. Uh, but the, what, what I feel about, uh, independence while married, cause I even asked that question, I think is absolutely, um, counterproductive i hear people say they do it all the time but that's literally if the the if the other person who let's be real that, that if the husband is like every time they talk about it and you listen to how the husband sounds how they describe the husband he's he's very like eh, you know the wife wants eh. like he's not really involved mentally like that's how they describe that guy like he's just there going with the flow, but it's really odd because women say they don't want a leader, but he kind of just goes with the flow, whatever you kind of want and say that that is the weirdest leader I've ever heard of. But this that's the kind of leader apparently that they want. Um, and the reason another reason that I think this is retarded be, uh, not outside the husband is because if you're getting married, to me you're. I don't want to sound like a like like a cliche, but I because I've heard it so much, I don't know how the other way to say it. But you you to me you kind of become one, right? So I don't understand the whole you get married, but then you keep the finances separately. I got a chick stop talking to me on Facebook Match because we, when we were talking about this stuff, I asked her, I'm like, oh, so would you keep a separate bank account? She, uh, no, I said, I, I, some sort of way I mentioned joint account. She like, and she said more than once that I would keep an account for myself. I'm like, well, that, why? I don't understand that, that. I don't, I wouldn't do that. That's the break for me. And she just stopped talking to me. It just doesn't make sense to me. If you are want to keep a separate bank account, keep a separate address too, because it makes no, it makes no sense. Because if you get into a financial buy. I know damn well you ain't going to be okay with me being like, well, that's our finances are separate. That's you. You're not going to allow that. You're not going to deal with that. You're going to pack your shit up and leave. So if you're not going to just combine it anyway, so we can both monitor the finances, not just, and I hate the whole victim thing. You just want to control her. It's like we, we're both controlling it. We both have eyes on the account. If any one of us does something egregious, we can both, we, we can go, uh, you fucked up and you have to fix this. Whatever you bought, take it back. Hopefully the loss isn't too big, but this is, this is egregious here. That, that, to, that obviously makes the most sense if you're going to, you know, be married, but I guess it's more than okay to just, you know, just keep everything separate, but somehow you live together and all this other shit. That is, that does just don't, don't make a lick of sense, and I don't buy it. But I repeat, and we can move on. Is that if you want to keep finances separate, fine, but just don't ever get fucked up in the financial situation because I'm gonna remind you that it's separate. She responds in a healthy way. Absolutely, the goal is emotional interdependence, but the ability be, to be financially independent if need be. And I just hit short because I, I was over it at that point. I, you are lying to me. You are lying. You're using the trauma of either yourself or other people to simply gain some sort of bullshit victim card so you don't have to actually have any obligation to anything. I be damned. It doesn't even make sense that you get to tell me, hey, I'm kind of, um, I, I, if I agree to this obligation, I'm at risk of something because look at what's happened before. Okay. Well, if I obligate myself to come help you when you're in need, look at how many guys have lost their lives on the way to help their wives. So I think you just call AAA and like, leave me the fuck alone. That is stupid. That is so fucking dumb. But you can use that same reasoning to me. 
You can use that same reasoning to me because I might be a bad guy and fuck you up, but I can't use that same reason when I want to get out of my bed when you stranded. I can't do that. You get into a, a financial situation, like I said, I can't say, you know, in history, women have kind of like fucked up money and then their husband has to help them. And then when their husband helps them, they leave. I can't use that, can I? What And what situation can I use or the men use, hey, look, fucked up shit has happened, so don't call me for help. So when? When can that ever be used? But you get to be a you get to be a never ending victim to the person you're married to. Fuck no. How the hell? Like how do you? I don't understand how dudes sit there and back this shit up. Like you're voluntarily going into a situation saying, "Yeah, she's right. I could whoop her ass," and that's that's applaudable. That gets applauded every time. That's crazy. She should have her independence from me, her husband, because you know. Other husbands have whooped their wives' ass, so pfft, why shouldn't she feel that way about me? Nigga, she married you, that's why. The f- this ain't this ain't shotgun wedding era. She volunteered to marry you. So but she also gets to go, ah, but I don't trust him. What? Literally something you can take care of with a con a, a contract you had to your lawyers. Plain and simple. But nope. Rather, you rather have all the good shit and none of that obligation on the back end. That's I would say that's crazy, but I just repeat myself over and over again. 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 You tired of hearing that yet? Me too. I agree with you. Women who have forgotten the art of being feminine are the ones who are struggling to attract masculine. When the fuck? Did she say that? I think she's referring to the part where she said men don't date based on money. I think that's what she's referring to. That I can agree with, but I think she worded it just a little funky for me. <sighs> Without feminism, you would not be able to get an education on a bank account or on... Pro- y- yes, you would. Because you could get a bank account then. A woman owning a bank account was not banned. It wasn't banned. I looked it up. Every, the the two, well, I read two articles. The two articles both said from different sources, excuse me, some banks didn't allow women to open bank accounts there. Why? Well, shit. Only a third, which by the way, a third of women work then, full time. A third, according to what I read. A third of women work back then. But if most of you did not work, it would be in, it would make no sense for you to go in there, open a bank account, withdraw, or open a credit and or open a credit card, run that shit up, and then now because I can't go after him, I have to just go after you. But you have no money, and then like with, like now you just got now you just use the shit, put the bank in bad in a bad situation because I've let you use all these people's money, and you can't pay me back. You don't have to pay me back because, again, you don't fucking work anyway. So if you never open up shit at all and your marriage doesn't fail, you there's no obligation for you to pay shit back. That makes sense. I had a back and forth with a chick on Facebook like three days ago. And she was doing the same shit. And it's like, dude, stop it. She was talking about like hiring some shit. Some shit like that. I forget what it was. But the, the whole point I made was... Um, it's not sexist to, to, for a company to say, look, I'd rather hire the guy who doesn't get pregnant and doesn't have to take off work. And in fact, if he gets somebody pregnant, he's more likely to be forced to come to work and negotiate with me about pay so I can keep his ass here longer and working a little harder. Like, that just makes sense. That's not sexist. That's common sense. But oh, it's just hatred of what, like, really? Men generally hated women so much, they didn't, like, launch missiles when you barked in the streets with your titties out. They didn't, they just, they just folded. They raped, pillaged, murdered women forever and ever, and all it took was marching with no shirts on, and you got your way. 
The power of the nipple. Really? Really? Does that even make sense? No, it doesn't. Can y'all stop using this? It's obviously wrong. It is so fucking wrong. But I guess it sounds, feels good to say, so we're just going to keep saying it. But you're so wrong. It is, it's not even logical. You mean to tell me you are staring down the metal, the barrel of metaphorical, but yet still literal, literal guns of dudes you say hated you and were super violent and they didn't give a fuck if they raped you because they actually thought it was just like their right. And you said, oh, really? Well, I'm going to go out into the streets naked. And they said, fuck, how do we stop this? And just did, and they just folded. You're full of shit. You, you, you are full of shit. If you really are peddling that nonsense, come the fuck on. Come on. Ah, oh, that's. Alrighty. Alrighty. And women owned property before feminism. That shit's crazy. That's been discussed. That's been talked about. Remember when only property writers, property owners could vote? Some of the voters were women. So it just, it just doesn't matter what truth is. That victim card is way too valuable. And I know it's not just women. It's like I'm black and I will tell you blacks play this shit all the time too. All the fucking time. To the point where even when we're right, we can't claim to be right because we use it so fucking much. People gotta stop this. Let's let's keep it to this topic, but damn, the victim the victim car rings again. I'm not reading all that shit. Could not agree more, Nelly. As a highly educated woman with an ambition career, I do find it hard to date someone who's not on my level. I can't respect a man that has not achieved more than me in life. Here's my issue with this type of thinking, ladies. It's almost like you're saying you're the weakling or the in or the dumb of the two sexes. So therefore, any man who can achieve what you can achieve, therefore, bad man. Like, that's so stupid. If you're not dumber than us by default, why would this be a criteria? Why? That doesn't make sense. Here's what this really translates to. And y'all don't like to be honest with it because then you have to defend it. And I don't know why y'all don't like defending things that you believe in. It's weird. But what this really translates to is, look, I get to spend every dollar that I make, which is a very human thing to do. We all do it, uh, except for billionaires. But like most of us, $50,000 earners, $200,000 earners, million dollars, we all spend pretty, like 80 to 90% of our income. All of us do. So it's, it's, it's a very apparent that women in these situations are pretty much saying, look, after taxes, I make like 87000 I spend eighty five of that shit. So if after, ta- after taxes, you making 50000 well, fuck. That means now, if we average out, now I can sp- I, I spend 15000 less on myself. And that's not fit. Like, that's so, that, that, you want to talk about selfish. It's amazing. Like I, I figured out recently that when women, like the more money women have, the more that everybody in that household becomes an individual. It's no longer the family unit. No, no, not at all. It's her, the dude who also spends his money on her, and then the kids who should be getting fed and housed by him, and then she'll buy some bullshit with her money when she feels like it. Maybe that that's what I've uncovered when the, when it's a stay at home wife. Oh, we're, we're a family and you don't forget that. Cause family court going to have your ass. Don't forget it. But when she got her bread, Oh, it's mine. And then ours It's mine. And then Ours. Ours is different than mine. Mine is one person. Ours is us. And that somehow makes sense. Sure. 
Fuck it. The problem is every article or study I just scanned shows that hypergamy is on the decline. The article, the only articles I read that claim hypergamy is a female feminist progressive driven problem. What data are you analyzing to support your perspective? Which appears to suggest women are gold diggers, men are victims of female independence, or am I misreading your stance? Okay, this this person, this lady just kind of like, I don't, is that a guy? I don't, this person is kind of like, I think they're just suffering from bias here. Because, let's go to the part where they say, but Daniel, are you analyzing to support your perspective? But you didn't cite your fucking articles that you read. So, but somebody else has to also bring the articles out. Which, by the way, when you say that her, her parking was on the decline, I'm pretty sure what they did was they went, Okay, women, the, the study they did, I'm pretty sure it went something like this. Well, there are more women today who date men that make less than them than before. Well, remember, 30% of women have full-time jobs back in the golden ages that everybody wants to point to and call traditional. Whereas today, like more than 70% of women. So it's more than double women who have who have full-time jobs. So no shit. That's going to be the case. That doesn't mean. The desire. Or the the, the, the exercise and opportunity. When it shows itself. Went on the decline. You literally just went number for number. I hate when people do that. Unless. Unless it is absolutely. No, no bueno or no brainer. Whatever the fuck it is. The, the proper term there. I want to know where you got the numbers from. Just like this person. Where did you get them from? Because you can always just make numbers support something that you want. So these women that are in these hypergamous, these anti-hypergamous marriages, how much longer, like, how much likely are they to last 25 plus years versus the other way around? I don't know. But that is a very, very valuable question. There are some more, but off the top of my head, that is a very important question to ask. If you want to say that it's on the decline. Because the I watched Kendra G religiously. The dating show? Every I watched it a couple hours ago. It got to the point to where Kendra literally had to take a pause and go, Look, niggas, if y'all ain't got bread, just stop dating. Fuck it. Because a guy asked, yo, if... He asked a question. He fought, somebody finally asked a question that I've been asking without super chats for a while now. If you make 150 grand, why does he need to? That's still hell. If you make half of what you make, that's still over 200 grand in my house. But he has to. Why? And her and her guess was like, nigga, because that's what it is. They ain't saying it like that, but that's that's the message, nigga. That's what it is. Women want more. Just whatever. We don't give a fuck. Just have more money than I do. That was the message. So what? What study did? What did this study? This study. What did this study study in that regard? This is the question. And then it says here is, it appears to just women are gold diggers. Okay, here's here's my definition of gold diggers. It is essentially a woman who's trying to find her way to have a sponsor for the rest of her life. But they'll actually have to do anything to earn that sponsorship, right? When I say do anything, I mean, if she, now I'm going to give you two examples, high end and low end. I'll give you low end first because people don't believe you can be a gold digger on the low end. No, nah, you definitely can't. The chick that be on all of those government programs and then your little funky ass $200 child support that everybody claims is the norm, all of that. That's a gold digger too. If all she wants is just a, a consistent check coming in, she don't give a fuck if she's staying in the hood. Well, some can find a way to get that voucher at least near a, a suburb light. Some of them get the vouchers to, to go there, right? So take that, but uh, uh, uh that that's a gold digger because you're just trying to have some sort of sponsorship for the rest of your life. Hell, all of you people who who who, who like Tupac. 
One leg, one less hungry mouth on the web for some shit. I forget how the lyrics go specifically, but that's what he was talking about. Well, not the the direct thing I was saying, but it, it, it plays a part. I get to have more of this welfare for myself. Fuck the kid. More money. Now, obviously, on the higher end, if, you know, somebody like Blake Griffin, baby mama, who's already getting paid six figures for one kid, then they have two by that dummy, and now she can pay $3 million a year because, you know, that's how much it takes to take care of, uh, of children. And that's definitely the role of family court. To, you know, make fathers pay a lot of money. Not to, you know, serve families. Because they'll take you if you had a one night stand. Just, just, you know, make sure that his ass pay that, pay that bread. That's cool for them. Like, that's so stupid. That's not the topic. Let's move on. It's much easier to be attracted to a man who makes more. A successful, ambitious man says, goes and puts the work, puts in the work. It's attractive. Stop it. Stop it. Y'all don't give two fucks. If that man inherited not only some money, but he inherited a business and all he got to do is stay afloat, y'all will be attracted to his ass too. So stop stop putting the 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 pretty picture there to go, this is why I like a man who makes more money because he's just so ambitious. If that nigga hit the lot of 400 million, you don't give a fuck. You there for that right? You on that boat too. You on that plane too. Stop acting like the only guys y'all like that make more money, y'all the ambitious ones. Stop it. If I have, if if another LeBron James, Victor Wembanyama, who's seven like six, and was going to the NBA regardless, stop acting like you don't like like dudes who just fall into the situation. Stop it. What about pe what about the people who are who aren't looking to raise a family or have children? What are empty nesters looking for? What are those men looking for? Youth? Okay, so I, I think what she's trying to say is specifically the men who are who are childless and single. But you didn't she didn't mention if he was let's just assume she's talking about a successful guy. I don't think she's talking about anybody else. So let's just assume she's talking about a successful guy. What is he looking for? Well, according to social media, he's literally just looking for, just like women, fun. And somehow, it's the same kind of fun. Somehow. Even though, we'll say, all the time, men are too simple to the point where they'll have a TV and a sofa and in the whole house. But somehow, according to the internet, he's looking for exactly the same thing women are. Because he absolutely, if you watch dating shows, the perfect man is, is a guy who is actually a woman except in a guy's body. All right. What did he say? Women in the U.S. have become... Too masculinized, so they lose their attractiveness to American men, generally speaking. That is that statement was so broad, it doesn't really say anything. Wow, you nailed it. I couldn't have said it better. High earning, well educated woman. Attracted to everything you to everything you said. Now more than 40, still attractive. But the initial small dating pool has become even smaller with the entry of more women in my space. Enter the 40 plus man I wanted to date the attractive, well accomplished 40 plus female. I feel fortunate to have found someone recently that is a unicorn, but don't tell him that. Of course you're private. Yes, the juice was worth the squeeze. Definitely would rather be alone than with the wrong person just for this. Uh, uh, ladies, I refuse to believe there's only two options in this case. 
I and I'm gonna actually go back because there's a woman who I did go back and forth with who I who comment I'm not seeing here. But apparently every time this conversation comes up, I heard women make the same case. Well, if I don't make the money and be by myself, then I'm just gonna be with, you know, a a, a hell, I, I now that I think about it, that's literally what the first pe pe woman was making. He's gonna like beat her or this is so stupid. This is so, do y'all only see those two kind of guys? Like it is the is the is the in in the middle boring guy, so not an option to you. You just delete him from psyche, so he does he shows up like Black Mirror and he's just invisible. Is that what it is? All righty. Oh fucking K. Let me go find that comment. Okay, so this was literally the reason I wanted to make this video, but I totally forgot once I got going into the video. But she says, My God, this is such truth. People do not understand what I that I want to date up. Someone better than me. People literally just do not, not get it and will get mad when they hear this. But as a single smart two master degrees homeowner, I can attest that this is absolute one thousand percent truth. Well, it's not that we get mad. It's just it's fucking stupid. You, I, y'all routinely go. I'm so fucking awesome with my accomplishments. Why wouldn't I want better than my accomplishments? So now, basically, you're asking for your marriage or your husband to literally just be another accomplishment. Just the, he's going to fit right next to the degree on the wall. Just, just there. That that is, are you thinking about that? Because that's how you're treating it. There's nothing authentic about that. Where am I? Where am I? Trying to find me. She has no kids. You know, got them in the profile picture. Okay. So I said, be reasonable and go down. We'll definitely get and keep you married. I don't. There, there, was, there was a joke there. It was a, a oral sex joke. If you don't, if you don't get it, um, and she says, I don't need to get married just to get married. I will wait for the perfect person for me. And if it turns out that I'm alone, it's okay. I'm happy and fulfilled in my life enough not to settle for someone down. What? So you have two master degrees. Do you use both of them? Like literally both of them. I could be wrong, but I doubt you use both of them. So y'all will get decorated just because. Y'all will go out and fuck just because. Y'all go out and, and, and do the partying just because. But getting married, no. Because if you're going to say that you didn't do just because those other things like the degree or whatever, okay, well, getting married can't ever fall under the just because because there are other reasons to get married other than marrying up, right? So you doing everything else based on your criteria on what just because is. You can do all that just because. But marriage, no. Why not? Why can you do everything else just because we're not marriage? You can wait for whatever you want, but the perfect person is almost impossible. I've heard this being this being okay with being alone nonsense for a few years now. None of us actually know what it's like to be old as hell with nobody. I can only imagine it's going to to hit uh, as lol. I think I meant a lot different, but I was at work, so I was trying to, like, type this and get, like, on with it. I, I think I meant it's going to hit as hit different. I, I don't know. But hit different. Just, you know, make sense of that how, however you can. And my thing was, like, I just, like, like, I just also understand that the way that I approach this, I very well could be by myself. That's not a want, though. 
That's not just, I'm not flipping about that like, fuck it. I mean, shit. Literally, myself is better than like myself and someone else. Because that's that's retarded. That's retarded thinking. We, we're at a point now where we're, say, we're just flippantly saying we're okay with being by ourselves. So I don't think people understand. Like, how, like, have you ever actually seen somebody old and a motherfucker by themselves? Have you ever actually seen that and what that's like? I've told a story a few times now about the lady who was 50 something years old, had health problems, and now her sister got to take care of everything, had to, had to take care of everything at that point. Like, like, luckily, that was the case. Otherwise, you'd be in and out of that hospital by yourself. And I I have never been into the, in a hospital for like, like overnight stay or nothing like that. But damn, I can imagine how cold that is. Because hospitals are actually like cold. I heard for like medical reasons. Like that that's that's going to hit different. Like I don't think them degrees is gonna mean shit in that situation. So the idea that you can't sacrifice like less than perfect for her as she keeps saying as if that that doesn't mean anything. And we'll get to that later. But the, the idea that you can't sacrifice a less than perfect person for them old as hell years. That's a little odd. Like you're lying to yourself. Trust me. You are lying to yourself. It's good. That's cool enough. When, that's cool to say when you can walk regularly. It's, it's, it's cool as hell then. Well, you can literally just get up and go whenever you feel like it. I'm pretty sure. And you still... Hold on. Nah, uh, she's private. But you seem a, a little bit attractive. I'm pretty sure that's how that comes off. But how at me when you're 78? And like, can't stand up really. And she says, I'm not ready for the perfect person. There's no such thing. I'm waiting for the perfect person for me. I agree that I will not be 100% happy being alone as I grow old, but I'd rather be alone than settle. If someone is going to make me miserable in my old age, you can bet your ass is going to make me make is going to be me making myself miserable before I allow some man who I can't stand after a few years doing it. I prefer loneliness to miserable company. I've always been that way since I was a teenager. I know that you, what you mean by your comment, but look at the, all the women who want to have kids and can never have them. They get along just fine. Does it suck sometimes? Yes. But sometimes you can't do anything about it and have to live with it. That's fucking irrelevant because you absolutely can. Like, what the fuck was that? You tried to give yourself some credit. But they immediately eliminated the credit by going, well, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you can, though. You can. And the idea of, oh, those other women are getting along just fine. You mean they're getting along while, while accepting reality that they literally can't? But you can? That's not the same thing. That's not the same fucking thing. How many women have went on record in recent years saying... Damn, I should have had them kids. Because this shit sucks. How many? And you're still going with the... But, oh, let's go back to your perfect person for me. You think saying perfect for you makes it different than the perfect person. No, it doesn't. Because the fact that you're saying perfect person for you, that still says you have this list of check boxes for this person in the world that you've never met to meet. This very specific person to come into your life, that they, that's that's unrealistic. That is unrealistic. You can't literally be, you can't be asking for somebody to be the perfect person for you. Because newsflash, look at the look at the topic here. We're talking about dating up, right? Remember that dating up, and you having these degrees. And the way you described yourself, you don't think this dude is either already taken or there's a line? So ask yourself, is a man with a line of hoes or with a wife and kids perfect for you? 
Is it? You'd probably say no. I'm sure you'd say no. Because I'm sure you're too good to be the side chick. Although, I'm also sure you're not celibate. And then again, with this idea of the man is going to make you miserable because he's less than perfect for you. Man, go fuck yourself. Listen, this type of, of, uh, of this idea, this gives a lot of credibility to the, to the, the group that people like this hate. The red pillars. The, the manosphere, even the incels. Because if you're going to put anything less than you in the will make you miserable department, oh my God, who are you? Who the fuck are you? Because I'm me, anything less will make me miserable. Puh. What? You ain't shit neither. You just got paper on the wall. Otherwise, when you have your perfect person for you. And then she kind of somewhat agrees that she's actually miserable quite a bit. The, I, I really don't understand that. I don't understand. How do, how do you it, all but admit? Because she didn't like literally line for line, word for word, say I'm miserable. But she admits that she is a miserable person. But still, I just can't date anybody who isn't awesome than a motherfucker. Lady, you're miserable. Get over it. Get somebody. Live life. Damn. You're not that great. You're not like, when I say you're not that great, I'm not trying to be an asshole and say you ain't like, I, honest, I said you ain't shit for, you know, traumatics. But seriously, like. You're, you're, you're still a person. You're still a human. You are a human being. Are you, like, did you invent some wild, crazy shit? And then, like, now... Like, 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 like seriously. Seriously. I really don't understand. And if you want to say that I'm, like, poisoned by, like, internet and shit, because I hear that a lot. Not towards me, but, like, in general, whoever has my talking points. Remember, a lot of my shit that I get... I'm getting from the idea also from a woman's show like Kendra G. From there. That's one of the big sources of where I get this idea from. So again, ladies, like seriously, this idea that you're just too good to date regular people because you have paper on the wall, that's in fucking insane. That's, that's wildly insane. Hey, look, go ahead. And, you know, this would be easier to swallow if we didn't have the we didn't have the society we have and the government we have that forces people to take care of her if this if her plan doesn't work out. If we reach if this crop of women grow old and they ain't got no 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 people to care for them, oh, the government gonna step in and and with cash from everybody else. To help take care of this problem. That's that's where the bullshit really starts to pile up. Because if I if I could keep more of my money, because I don't have to take care of not only her, but the bastard kids y'all create, these these bullshit programs y'all want for every fucking thing in y'all life ever, because you can't do it yourself for some odd reason. You incredible ass people. Everybody's awesome, but can't do shit they self. Crazy. That is insane. But again, if 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 it wasn't for that, I would give no fucks. I still make this video and laugh, but I give no fucks. But people like me are forced to help take care of people who this does not work out for. And we're told to shut the fuck up and take it. No, no, bitch, no. You go to hell. Eat a dick, whatever. I don't. I hope you do, girl, and get miserable. Cause I gotta help take care of this shit anyway. Be right, not positive out.